Welcome back folks, it's Matsmus. thanks for joining me on today's video. We are learning a little bit more about self-propelled guns, and this one is a really peculiar one. Again, this vehicle has been requested a lot on my channel, so I thought I'd finally get around to doing it. Like I said, it is peculiar, but also extremely interesting, and I knew nothing of this vehicle until doing some solid research on it, and I've got to say I'm highly impressed. Before I go into the video, guys, I would really appreciate if you do wish to support this channel, please check out my Patreon page in the link in the description box below. As I've mentioned many times before, YouTube really just doesn't like to support its content creators when creating military-related content, so just something to think about if you do want to support me and my channel. So as always guys, we will discuss this vehicle, its specifications, a little bit about how it's developed in history, and then I'm just going to put my own little spin on it. So today guys, we are talking about the Archer FH-77BWL-52 self-propelled howitzer from Sweden. So let's talk about how this vehicle came to be. BAE Systems Bofors in Sweden has developed this vehicle as the FH-77BWL-52 self-propelled howitzer with a 155mm howitzer on a 6x6 chassis. And this thing is huge, not only in length but also its height. The howitzer has a range of 40 kilometers using current standard ammunition and a 60 kilometer range with the M982 Excalibur rounds, which I will be doing a video on in the future. They're basically a more advanced, more um, prominent artillery round that can be punched down range with an extended range. Clever piece of technology. The howitzer can also fire the bonus top attack rounds developed by Bofors and Gayet, now Nexter. Archer is the name of the complete system, with the 77BWL-52 self-propelled howitzer and the ammunition resupply and support vehicles. So Archer isn't just the vehicle guys, it's actually the artillery system. It's everything that encompasses this weapons platform, including of the gun, the truck, the ammunition, the support vehicles, everything that comes with it. This self-propelled howitzer is fully automated. It can be used in traditional warfare fire support as well as modern international peacekeeping and peace enforcement missions for the fact that it is quite easily deployable and a wheeled vehicle. Unlike tracked vehicles, this vehicle can go long distances without having to be worried about damaging roads, using a lot of light gas. It obviously is very, very good at getting long distances or quickly to locations. However, it does falter in some areas of cross-country terrain. Swedish Defense Material Administration, or FMV received the first serial production of the Archer Artillery Systems from BA Systems in October 2015. In terms of this vehicle's specific history and development, in 2003, FMV awarded a development contract to Bofors, now BA Systems Bofors, to build two demonstration howitzers. The prototype FH-77BWL-52 was entering into firing trials in Sweden in 2005 and 2006. So guys, this vehicle is fairly new in its design and its procurement into the modern main battlefield. In September 2006, FMV placed a contract for detailed design work on the Archer and in January 2007, a contract for the next development phase. The Swedish army, which quite a surprise to me, requires 24 of these systems, which translates to two battalions of artillery pieces for their military, which is quite impressive considering Sweden is not exactly a huge, huge military, and that's a lot of artillery pieces in this configuration to be having under their belt. In November 2008, Sweden and Norway signed a cooperative agreement for the development of the Archer system and, in January 2009, awarded BA Systems a contract to complete development of this artillery system. A final prototype was rolled in in July 2009, followed by a contract for 48 systems, specifically 24 for Sweden and 24 for Norway. The prototypes were completed in 2010 and Archer entered service for the Swedish army in February 2016. So as I mentioned before, these are very new systems, it's you know not old technology, they've obviously put a lot of effort and design and procurement into this weapon system, and to me that's a big bonus, you know, modern day equipment coming into play, a joint effort by two very uh, professional and well technologically minded uh, you know, countries, so that's really interesting to see. The Archer system is in the development of the earlier 155mm towed FH-77L39, of which more than 700 were produced and are in service with the Swedish, Nigerian and Indian forces. The vehicle platform is a modification of the Volvo A30D 6x6 articulated all-terrain hauler vehicle, and it is a beast, guys. 
The vehicle cabin and engine compartment are fully armoured and the cab is fitted with a bulletproof, fragmentation proof window. The cabin seats up to four personnel. The howitzer is operated by three of those four crew. And the cabin is fitted with a door each side with a circular roof hatch which can be mounted with a machine gun. The main weapon of this beast is the 155mm 52 caliber gun. The gun uses the proven design of the cradle and recoil system from the current generation FH-77B towed field howitzer. Being equipped with a target acquisition or designation sight feature, the gun has direct fire capability. The weapon is equipped with a fire control system, obviously, along with a laying system, an inertial navigation and muzzle velocity radar. Data from the radar is downloaded on the onboard computerized fire control system. However, Archer can use other remote weapon stations on the market. A remote weapon system comprising of a day and night sight with a 7.62mm general purpose machine gun is installed on the roof of the cab. BA Systems Bofors has developed the Lima family of gyro-stabilized, fragment-protected, electro-optical sights and remotely controlled weapon systems for this vehicle as well. The Lima machine gun can be aimed and fired from inside the armor protection of the cabin of this vehicle. Segem's Sigma-30 artillery pointing and land navigation units are fitted to the Norwegian and Swedish archers. Segem supplies the units are part of the contract signed with BAA Systems in February 2011. There is a remote control weapon system as mentioned mounted on top of the crew compartment for the vehicle for self-protection only. The vehicle really doesn't need to have major weapon systems on top of it to protect it in terms of bigger caliber other than the 7.62. It's purely to defend against infantry or low flying aircraft that could potentially find this vehicle as it's roosting up about to punch rounds down range. The weapon system is operated remotely and has on mount sensors and is a stabilized weapon and the sensors are attached underneath the weapon. The vehicle carries 20 projectiles in the fully automatic magazine and an additional 20 projectiles for reload. The howitzer can use NATO modular charges or both as Uniflex 2 modular charges. The Uniflex 2IM modular charges consists of two sizes of combustible charge cases, one full size and one half size case, both filled with the exact same type of insensitive, some sort of chemical compound which I'm not even going to bother trying to say. The modular charge system allows for several increments of charge to be available and increases the gun system's multiple round simultaneous impact or MRSI capability and a good range overlap between increments. Basically guys what that means is once one round goes down range they can actually stagger each round so that they all land at the same position at the same time. A very clever piece of technology that really if you think about it takes quite a bit of you know computing skill and uh, you know technological advances to make that happen and that's nothing new but it is quite impressive. With BA Bofors next to bonus rounds the range is 35 kilometers. The range of the gun is extended as mentioned before to 60 kilometers with the precision guided Raytheon Bofors XM982 Excalibur round and the Excalibur shell is corrected in flight towards a pre-programmed trajectory by a GPS guidance system. Like I said guys this thing isn't in living in the past it is really up to date with its technology. The gun of the vehicle features a fast strategic mobility capability. A commercial articulated hauler provides the vehicle with a rapid deployment and rapid redeployment capability. The hauler also helps the vehicle in attaining all-terrain capability. The system is operated by the three of the four crew members who are protected in combat by being under the armor package. However, when having to reload, of course, they will need to disembark and reload the ammunition. The armoured platform provides protection against 7.62mm rounds, armour penetration rounds and 6kg mines, level 2 Stanag 4569 capability. The vehicle will also have an MBC protection for the crew as standard for NATO vehicles. The system is designed for high strategic operation and tactical mobility, which basically means guys it needs to shoot and scoot as quickly as possible. The vehicle can reach road speeds of up to 60 to 70 kilometers an hour depending on the actual power plant that they've placed in it which can be variant to both Sweden and Norway. It is capable of traversing snow up to a depth of 100 centimeters which obviously in those kind of climates and environments that the countries they're hosted in that's pretty important. It is rail transportable which is good to be able to deploy at long distances and can be air transported in the new A400M aircraft. A large hydraulically operated stabilizer is installed in the rear of the chassis and is lowered with the vehicle into the selecting firing position. The gun elevation and traverse ranges are from 0 to 70 degrees and minus 75 degrees to 75 degrees. 
The initial deployment time and redeployment times are less than each of around 30 seconds, which is really impressive. The system provides precision strike firepower and high sustained firepower for support for deep firing operations with more than 25 tons of ammunition for the gun ready for 24 hour operation. The howitzer has a continuous rate of fire of 75 rounds an hour and an intensive rate of fire of 20 rounds, i.e. a full magazine, in 2.5 minutes, and a salvo rate of fire of 3 rounds in 15 seconds. The MRSI capability, or basically all the rounds firing and landing at the same point, or multiple rounds simultaneous impact, is up to around 6 rounds. Direct sighting can be used for target ranges up to 2,000 meters, basically turning it into a tank. So there we go guys, the Archer Artillery System. As mentioned before, it is a system. It's not just one vehicle, it encompasses multiple different uh, you know, platforms to keep this thing supported and moving and firing. A couple of things that really stand out for me for this vehicle. First of all, they've put a lot of emphasis on crew protection. You know, they're nice and high. They can even hold back against a six kilogram mine. That's really impressive. Very good protection. I gotta admit, the size of this thing is a little overwhelming for me though. It looks like it could be quite difficult to maneuver through wood lines and certain tracks and roads because at the end of the day, some of these vehicles are gonna have to go into areas like you see in this video right now where it's, you know, wood tight wood lines, difficult to move around. This is a very large vehicle. Another pro for me, 30 seconds to deploy and redeploy out of the area and sh shoot and scoot. That is really, really impressive. Uh, the 20-round magazine is also fantastic too. The guys don't have to mess around at the back there. Everything's pretty much done for them for 20 rounds. And if you're putting more than 20 rounds down range in a, say, a battalion or battery size strength, something has gone very, very wrong. Uh, hopefully, they never have to be used in that particular regard. But at the end of the day, guys, that's impressive. You know, 30 seconds to deploy a gun of that size, a 155mm gun pretty impressive and we know other self-propelled guns out there have that capability but really in terms of it being able to be deployed fast and move again on wheels it's, it's quite impressive the rounds that it uses obviously quite impressive too 35 kilometers up to the 60 with the excalibur rounds excalibur are clearly going to be more expensive though so just something to think about Another pro for me is the technology this thing uses. You know, it's very modern and up-to-date. It's been given its own crew protection system with the remote weapons control station. That's great, being able to protect itself. And the fact that it's quite mobile in terms of resupply for ammunition, you know, it looks very automated. Everything's very simple in terms of getting ammunition into those racks, which is really, really important for the artillery. There's no point having a great gun and a great system if you can't resupply that sucker and get it back out into the battlefield. Overall, guys, really impressed with the Archer system. Like I said, being that it's a system, it encompasses more than just the gun and the platform. It's more than resupplying. It's cross-compatibility, too, you know, being able to use other systems, as mentioned, from other countries. It's, it's quite impressive. Still utilizing the old gun from, you know, the previous days of the Swedish military. Again, tried and tested the 155mm gun. And clearly, they've seen something that's worked. This, if it isn't broke, don't fix it, you know, and good for them. I'm really impressed that uh, Sweden and Norway have chose this gun for their military and I hope it serves them very, very well. I've got to admit though, I am a little skeptical with it being in those kind of environments being so snowy. I don't know how well these vehicles do, this big old Volvo 6x6, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they suit just perfectly for that area and I'm sure they wouldn't have picked it if it wasn't the case. But to me, from you know a recovery standpoint and knowing how vehicles operate in those kind of conditions, being it's so long and such a wide base, it just seems like it's going to get stuck a lot. I don't know, maybe it doesn't, but that's just my own opinion. Anyway, don't take my opinion for much, guys. Like I said in the past, I don't have much say on the vehicle if I don't know much about it and never served with it. But that's just my take on it from the research I've done so far. Fantastic vehicle, very, very impressive gun, very, very impressive uh, modular capability for getting those rounds in the um, ammunition racks and such. And crew protection, again, I'm really impressed that they've looked after the guys actually going to operate this thing. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and content. If you did enjoy it, please leave me a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of not only the video, but of the weapon system itself too. If you want to be notified of any videos coming up in the future, please hit that little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any upcoming gaming or military related videos. Thank you again for joining me and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.